How's it going, pre-cal kids? Today we're looking at 5-5 five, five law signs. I thought the law and the law and law. Okay. Um, this is actually probably one of my favorite sections. It's pretty quick, painless. Let's do this thing. So suppose you have a triangle, A, B, C. It's the easiest one, two, three. So let's draw this triangle. The triangle A, B, C, right? Draw this in your notes. It's good for you. It's like taking vitamins. With corresponding sides, A corresponds to side little a. See how they match up? B corresponds to side little b. And C is opposite of side little c. Okay? What you need to know about this triangle is for all triangles, sine of A over side A equals sine of B over side B equals sine of C over side C. Okay. So that is true for all triangles. Not just right triangles like what we've been doing before where it just works with the right. It works with the wrongs and the lefts. All of them. Not a single good joke in here. Okay. So let's try this out, guys. Let's suppose we have a triangle ABC. Right? And the lay is 38 degrees. We don't know what A is. B is 46 degrees. And C, well, we don't know C. And we don't know little c either. Okay? But we have to solve the triangle, meaning we have to find all the lengths, right? Let's find angle C first. It's a triangle, so all my angles add up to 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract the two angles I know, I get my lost angle, my missing angle. Okay? So let me use my handy dandy calculator. I get 96 degrees. Okay, so C is 96 degrees. So we got one thing found. Now we need to find all the sides besides A. So A was 9. Now which side do you guys want to find first? B? Sure. So sine of A over A is going to equal my sine of B over my side B, right? But I actually know some of these. I know A is 38 degrees. So sine of 38 over, and the length of A is 9. Well, that's going to equal my sine of my angle B over the length of B. Okay? So now, I have to do some quick calculations. Well, I can plug this in my calculator right away and start getting some decimals, guys. But I'm going to do this the hard way. I'm going to switch these two things out. Because we can do that with proportions, right? I get B over 9 equals sine of 46 divided by sine of 38. Right? Then you can times both sides by 9. And then I plug that into my calculator. So let me just do some calculations here. Check my mode. Make sure you put your parentheses in the right place. Make sure you put your parentheses in the right point, Mr. Twilliger. And we get side length B is, drum roll, B equals about 10.5. Okay. So now we're only missing one thing. We need to find C. 
Okay, it's fine. See, we do the exact same thing we just did. But we're going to set it so it's sine of 96 over C. Okay. And I'm going to do the same exact steps where I switch these two things around. So I get sine of 96 over sine of 38 equals C over 9. Well, then times both sides by 9. Okay, and the reason I'm always going to use my original side length that they gave me because I know if I messed up the other side length, like if I messed up B, it won't matter because I'm using the one the book gave me. Okay, cancel, and again, I'm going to plug this into my handy dandy calculator. And I get C is around 14.5. Which makes sense, guys. Because remember a long, long time ago, a geometry teacher told you the bigger the angle, the larger the opposite side. So a quick check for this stuff is smallest angle corresponds to the smallest side. The largest angle corresponds to the largest side. Okay? Okay. By the way, guys, if you haven't been taking notes, it's all noteworthy stuff. Ambiguous case, that means there's two ways to do it. If you're given, you're given a side, a side, and an angle, like the sides are next to each other and then the angle. For example, if you're given a side, a side, and an angle, or an angle, side, side, that makes a bad word, so we don't use it. Anyway, you have to set up two triangles. So if you're given two sides and the angle's not in between them, like for this one we're given, you know, A is 12. This is big A. We're given C is 25 degrees and little c is 8. We're looking for B. We don't know angle B either. Now, think about this. Yeah, A could be our one of our shorter sides, right? Or, or I could set up A is our longest side. So I could done B. I'm sorry. Okay, so I could have said A equals 12, and that's my longest side, right? Here's A. Uh, C is still going to be 25 degrees. Little C is still 8. And we got a big B and a little B that we need, right? So there's two ways to set this up. And I'll show you. Here, guys, I found better pictures to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. But they mislabeled them. A. B. B. Same thing on this one. B, B, A, A, right? Because we want to be consistent with the original question. Okay, so I'm going to just show you the difference when you're finding angle A. So we're going to find the angle A first. So sine of A, because to find B, e, to find B is almost the same exact way. Sine of A over 12 equals sine of 25 over 8. I'm just doing my C over C. A over A. Okay, right? So sine of A equals 12 sine of 25 over 8, right? <clears throat> How do I get rid of sine? I sine inverse both sides, right? This is good old school trig. Okay, and you plug that in your calculator, which 
I'm gonna do. Give you a second to think about life. Yeah, 39 degrees for A, guys. Which, that's great. That looks like it's about right, because it's an acute angle. But if we look at this picture, we know A is not 39 degrees. So for this one, you use this number, and angle A is going to be 180 minus 39. So it'd be 141 degrees. Okay. That's all I do. You take your number, subtract it from 141. So for this guy, you know, angle B, this guy would be 180 minus 25 minus 39, right? Which is one sixteen. And for this one, B would be one eighty minus twenty five minus one forty one, right? It'd be thirty nine thirty nine minus twenty five is fourteen. So it'd be fourteen degrees. Okay? So you're gonna have to solve two triangles on this one. Okay, so keep that in mind. I will be that tricky. Maybe I'll do another one of these in class. Enjoy! I'm back. Okay, guys, I almost left without finishing these two triangles. We still haven't found B in either of them. Okay. On this side, we're going to do sine of 14 over B equals sine of 25 over eight. I'm going to use C's because they're the ones that were given to us. Okay, so they're going to probably be more accurate. Okay, so I do my switcheroodle me method, which means I get sine of 14 over sine of 25 equals B over 8 times both sides by 8. Plug in my calculator. And we get B is about 4.6 on this side, right? Now, think about this. What's the only thing we're changing about B on this side? What's that? Oh, the angle. So B on this side is actually going to be 8 times sine of, what was our angle B in this one? 116? 116 divided by sine 25. I didn't have to go through the work, guys. I'm just changing the angle, not what C was. So it's angle B. This is angle B. Okay, so I plug this into my hand and calculator. And we get angle B is about 17 degrees. I'm sorry, not angle B, side B. Sorry, before. B is about 17, which makes sense. B is my smallest side, B is my largest side. Okay? Now it's really done.